Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing a legendary GPU from 2006, the NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GTX. Now, this was a really high-end GPU back in 06. It released for a whopping 599 US dollars MSRP, but it was a huge leap in performance compared to the previous generation. I just checked some benchmarks and this boy, a single one of these, beat two 7800 GTXs in SLI. That's two high-end GPUs from the previous gen that also came out at $599 MSRP. That is crazy. This is a fast boy. <laughs> Let's go over its specs now. This is based on the Tesla architecture and this one is very interesting. It introduced CUDA technology to the table and it came with 128 CUDA cores. It also has 32 TMUs, 24 ROPs and 768 megabytes of GDDR3 memory. It consumes 155 watts of power so it requires a couple of 6-pin power connectors and this one is very interesting as well. It was considered a a power hungry GPU back in 2006. 155 watts was power hungry. <laughs> Guys, what? <laughs> Lastly, before we get to the gameplay section of this video, I want to thank PowerNod, a very kind subscriber who donated this beauty to the channel and a couple of other graphics cards as well. Thank you so much, sir. And let's play some games on this monster of a card, shall we? Let's start with one of my favorite games of all time. This is Far Cry 3 from 2012 at 720p using DirectX 9 and the low settings preset. And guys, this game at 720p resolution still manages to look pretty decent. Hello there. Hello there. What do you want? Oh boy. Okay. I'm just going to grab my car. You, you just stay there. God damn bastard. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's get in. Let's get it, please. <laughs> Jason, come on. It's all good. It's all good. He's gone now. Yes, he's afraid of cars. Let's go. You can see that the frame times are pretty consistent with the 8800 GTX. And that's amazing because this GPU was already six years old when this game came out. That's a bit insane, you know, especially in a time where technology moved way faster than it does today. Oh, enemies right here. Okay, let's see if we can manage to make some explosions here. All right, I got some mollies. There we go. Let's see. Oh, from behind. Not from behind. What are you doing? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. So let's heal ourselves. Ooh, we got C4. I didn't even know that we had C4. All right, let's explode the thing. There we go. Down into the 40s. That's the minimum that you can expect. It's going to provide a great experience. 60 on average almost. Now it's Bioshock Infinite from 2013. So this GPU was already seven years old. We're playing it at 720p using the low settings preset. It actually defaulted to very low but I think on low it's still playable. Look at the FPS here, for example. And I also have it on Epic Game Store, so I don't have access to the benchmark tool. For some reason, they don't give you that option in this version of the game. But we can run around the streets here and see the FPS, and we're getting mostly 40-ish. For the first few minutes of gameplay in the campaign here, I actually got 60 plus consistently. It was a buttery smooth experience, but getting to here... It gets really intensive, basically, all right? Oh, look, it's Roach from the future, kind of. Maybe not the future, actually, but yeah, look at him. Very nice. So it's not going to be a buttery smooth experience, but I would still keep the game on low instead of very low, because very low disables shadows and it will look pretty bland, actually. This has quite a unique art style, doesn't it? Like, the lighting is pretty exaggerated probably but uh, hey it's playable little stutter here and there and i could certainly enjoy the experience with the 8800 gtx you know sometimes it even reaches 60 plus which is quite nice but uh, can be a little bit inconsistent maybe lock the fps to 30 for a best experience in this one overall it's all right. Next up is the most popular game on Steam, CSGO at 720p using the lowest settings. And the hardest thing in this one is going to be clicking things in the menu because you don't have a cursor <laughs> with these old GPUs. Same thing happened with the 9600 GT when I tested that. Anyway, let's start counting our FPS. This is 
720p as I told you and it is performing okay it used to perform a lot better of course still above 60 FPS most of the time but of course if you come across a smoke or something like that it's gonna drop like crazy it's already dropped actually here in this video so it's not ideal but it is playable and you can of course uh, lower the resolution a little bit and achieve 60 plus all of the time which is nice with this gpu maybe i should do that okay i managed to do it guys 800 by 600 it only took me a few minutes to to do that and we're now getting uh, slightly higher fps up into the 100s at times that's all right okay yeah i expected a little bit bigger of a jump in terms of performance coming from 720p to 800 by 600 it usually does that but again this a very old gpu super outdated it's good that it can still play this game right oh and let me no 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 but javier why why i really wanted to take a look at a, a model up close because that sometimes uh, hurts performance by a lot in these older gpus it's now guys it's now i'm gonna see this guy from very up close no i'm not this one this one all right there we go so it, it can still drop as you could see there it's not ideal for sure for csgo it's playable but you are gonna be at a huge disadvantage now it's the second most played game on Steam, Dota 2 at 720p using the low settings preset with 100% resolution scale. First I tried the fastest one or very low settings preset and I saw 100 plus frames per second so I decided to do low settings. I've already seen it drop a couple of times from 60 but this way we can actually max out that GPU. But yeah, I'm a bit surprised with the performance that we're seeing in this one. This is another 2013 title. It runs very well on the 8800 GTX, dropping down into the 40s at times in team fights. This wasn't really a huge team fight though, but uh, we'll wait and see more, of course. All right, here we go. Oh my God, that's so intensive. All right, this is what I feared the most, guys. Oh, it drops so much. <laughs> so the team fights, the bigger team fights will definitely drop your FPS quite a bit. Uh, 19 FPS, I saw that. Oh my God, no, no, that's terrible. That's terrible. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to use the, the lowest settings possible again. Shouldn't ever have messed around with that. Look at that, 140. <laughs> See that? That's why I didn't test it right away, but uh, let's go back again. And here we go. Same team fight with a lot of effects. I mean, some of these effects are super intensive on these older GPUs. That's why they drop so much. It still drops into the 30s on very low settings, uh, but now it won't drop from 30 FPS. You're, you're still going to feel those slowdowns, of course, but it's, it's not completely awful it's still very playable in my opinion so this is playable it's not ideal but i mean uh, the fact that it's playable and better than a gt710 for example is great <laughs> all right guys for today's racing title i got need for speed most wanted 2012 so we're playing at 720p using a mix of low and medium settings as you can see and it seems like it's working quite well the game is kept to 60 frames per second there's no way to unlock it but it's actually really smooth gp utilization is not maxed out but it will be in city areas in this game okay it's gonna be a little bit more intense Intensive, and it is gonna drop from 60 frames per second unfortunately however it is a decent experience and this is another game from 2012 that's running okay ish on an 8800 gtx from 2006 <laughs> You know, I would absolutely have a blast playing this game with specs like these. Oh, look at that, guys. 50s. Sometimes it drops into the 40s as well. I can't go in that direction, unfortunately, because uh, then it's going to be a cutscene and <laughs> the girl will start talking and I don't want to hear her <laughs> in this one. All right. She's annoying. <laughs> Let's go in this direction now. 50s with a lot of smoke. Oh, yeah. Smoke effects are very intensive, aren't they? 
Yeah, let's check it out. Not a problem though. It seems to be well optimized this game and like the new crap that we have today in 2023. It's so refreshing to make these kinds of videos in old games, guys. I really like it. <laughs> 59 average, 37 1% lows. It's very playable. Now it's the good old GTA 5 in DirectX 10, 720p resolution and the normal settings which are the lowest settings in the game and it seems like it's getting very similar FPS to an overclocked GT 710. Now unfortunately the frame time consistency is pretty poor with 700 and uh, megabytes of VRAM. I don't remember the exact number anymore, 68 is that it? Anyway, uh, yeah, so it will stutter quite a bit because of it i have seen this same thing happen with a lot of sub one gigabyte gpus here in gta 5 unfortunately you just gotta live with a little bit of stuttering okay it's not the end of the world it's still playable ish unless it starts stuttering like that that's a bit too crazy already oh my god yeah okay i'll need to drop the resolution to 800 by 600 guys and it, we're still going over the vram limits at this res remember this is a 768 megabyte card so we are 99 megabytes above the limit and it says that it has three gigabytes because that's just how gta 5 works whenever you have less than one gigabyte of vram we're at 800 by 600 hopefully Hopefully it will ease out the stutter a little bit and it seems like that's the case but the VRAM is slowly creeping up once again 740 megabytes right now all right uh, it's starting to stutter a lot more once again maybe it's because it's rendering in all of these people and that's VRAM intensive probably all right yeah those stutters those spikes are quite big guys I remember playing this game on a GTX 260 896 megabyte GPU and it was also a stuttery mess but then upgrading to the GTX 260 1.3 gigabyte version or 1.7 gigabyte version something like that uh, was buttery smooth. Hello Jacqueline how's it going? Very good? Yes I'm here to see Bob today actually because he's been commenting in my videos guys. Bob has been there saying that he's been getting stronger and stronger because I don't kill him very often. So here we go. What are you gonna do, Bob? Huh? Are you stronger now? Let's fight, boy, let's fight! Come on! <laughs> I don't think Bob is that strong. Are you you're just gonna run away? <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. There we go. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> this is actually just how the game works in terms of punching people and stuff. I'm not using any cheats for super punches, although it seems like I am. <laughs> and that's been it for this benchmark run. Unfortunately, the 1% lows are always gonna suck a little bit because of the VRAM once again. It's almost playable, I guess. Next up is Battlefield 4, another 2013 title at 720p using low settings or the auto settings for this card. And look at that, it's getting 60s. That's pretty good. In some games, it's so much faster than a GT710 and in others, it kind of matches it or provides a worse experience in the case of GTA 5 in terms of the consistency of the game, of course. Yeah, this is totally a playable experience. Once again, frame times could be a little bit better, but I'm not complaining. If you really, really wanted to play this game with the 8800 GTX, it can actually do it. Uh, I'm gonna go down there. <laughs> you know? And see, this is still a very fun game to play, arguably better than Battlefield 2042. Actually better. <laughs> you know? There's no arguing uh, about that, actually. Oh, damn it. What? Who is shooting at me? And the thing is, Battlefield games feel pretty good with... Um, 40 plus frames per second, which is what we're getting here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> but yeah, unlike CSGO, for example, which doesn't feel good even with 60 frames per second, this is a lot better. Anyway, 61 FPS average is pretty playable, right? I enjoyed the experience. 
And to understand just how much of a beast the 8800 GTX was back in the days, we're playing 2009's Left 4 Dead 2 at an unreasonably high resolution for this card, 1080p high settings. And just take a look at those FPS, my friends. Now, this map has a lot of vegetation here, which will drop our FPS like crazy, but it's still holding up pretty well. 60 plus. Yeah, that's nice. Of course, this is 1080p resolution as well, which, again, was a really high resolution back in 2008. Not really used that often by most people. I think one of the highest resolutions that was still pretty common in those days was... <laughs> Come on, okay, we got it, we got it. Um, 1050p, I believe, 1650 or 1680 by 10. Something like that, you know, which is a little bit lower than 1080p for sure. But most people were playing at like 720p and uh, uh, squared monitors like 1024 by 768 or 1280 by 1024, for example. And uh, at those resolutions, of course, it will run a lot better. Let's go, people! There we go. Perfect. There's a jockey. There's a jockey. God. All right. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Let's go up there. Go up there. Actually, no, let's stay down here, throw the Molotov and see the FPS n near the fire. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, 50s. So it will drop quite a bit near fire effects, but uh, it's not bad. All right. Fun times, my friends. Fun times to be had in Left 4 Dead 2. Next up was going to be War Thunder, which actually worked previously. I tested the 9600 GT 512 megabyte GPU in this game, and it worked pretty well. But now it's giving us an out-of-memory error here, and I can't really fix it. <sighs> I'm sad, because this would have been playable. <laughs> All right, so now we should try a game from the era of this GPU, the dinosaur era. This is Ark Survival Evolved at 800 by 600 using the low settings. Now it's getting 30 plus, well, 28 plus frames per second in the most intensive map in the game, which is decent, but it's it looks absolutely terrible with that render scaling <laughs> set to like, what, 50 to 60 percent or whatever it is on the low settings preset. So yeah, I, I definitely don't recommend you to go out and play this game if you're running an 8800 GTX. And I mean, it's still interesting to take a look at this game because it's really, really intensive. Even for today's GPUs, if you run it at like 4K max settings, it becomes very hard to run. And of course, in the island map, it would be a lot less intensive as well. So uh, if you fancy seeing some dinosaurs like this one, well, it, it works. Works. <laughs> you know what? At least it's not stuttering like crazy. I'm pretty sure I've seen more stuttering issues with newer GPUs than with this one. Probably because we are using the low memory mode. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, for a period accurate game, we got Crisis 1, and this was the sh when it came out, my friends. It was really intensive, it looked absolutely insane for 2007, and it still shows right here. And we're playing it at 720p using the high settings preset, guys, with motion blur because I can't really see the cursor, so I, I can't be bothered to change that, okay? Anyway, <laughs> as you can see, this GPU has no trouble playing this title. And a lot of people actually upgraded to the 8000 series back in the days because they wanted to play this magnificently looking title. This is... Yeah, it's, it's such a joy to play, even in 2023, my friends. It's a piece of history right here. Doesn't drop near explosions either. Let's go. Do I have another weapon? Yes, I do. Come on. Come on. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to control, not gonna lie. But it is still playable with 30 FPS, you know? A lot of people were happy with 30 FPS in this game. Obviously, we could still lower the settings, but this is Crisis, my friends. We gotta play it on high settings, right? <laughs> this was so technically impressive back in the days, my friends. Look at all of the vegetation. There was nothing like Crisis in 2007. And this GPU could actually run it pretty well, as you can see. 
Look at that sun over there. It's looking super pretty. I mean, doesn't the lighting in this game look better than like Need for Speed 2012's lighting? Of course, that game was on low settings, but still. All right, you know what? This game deserves another test with medium settings as well. And I'm gonna disable motion blur. I just discovered that I can actually control the menu with the keyboard, so that's perfect. Oh, look at that. So much smoother than 30 frames per second. Damn. It still looks pretty good. Of course, textures look quite a bit worse now. Oops. Uh, and you know what? You should probably try to play Crisis these days on your rigs. Why is this so slow right now? I don't get it. What is happening? What is, is it because of this guy over here? <laughs> I don't, oh, oh, okay. We don't have a tire. All right, that's why. <laughs> but yeah, just give it a shot at like 4K max settings these days. It should look insane. We should try that out in the channel, actually. Look at this. Look at the water as well. Who needs ray tracing, right? 2007. Showing its strength here. Optimization as well. <laughs> actually, not really. <laughs> Looking at the fire effect, not a problem. This is nice, guys. There's some magic about playing these games on old GPUs. I don't know what it is, but it feels great. For the Call of Duty title, we got Black Ops 2 at 1080p using no shadows, basically low settings with high textures. And it actually works kind of well. Look at this, 60s, 70s is what you can expect. Of course, with some explosions and more intensive scenarios, it is gonna drop from 60 frames as you saw there. Like uh, zooming in is pretty intensive in this title because of depth of field that you can't disable it. I had a bit of a fight back in the days with settings in this game because every time I zoomed in <laughs> to aim down sights, the FPS would drop like crazy and I actually started playing with a lot of laser sights in this one because of it to improve the hip fire and for the game not to slow down like crazy. Now, these days, this is something that you would definitely not say, but back then, Call of Duty was really well optimized. Okay, compared to Battlefield especially, it was much easier to run, and I had a blast playing it at 900p on my laptop back then. With this GPU, I could have played it at 1080p absolutely fine. In fact, I think the recommended requirements asked for an 8800 GT, either the recommended or the minimum. Don't remember for sure, but uh, it was really, really good. It's probably the last great Call of Duty, you know? I think so, at least. <laughs> uh, of course, we're playing with bots over here. Oh, damn it, because it's very hard to find matches these days, and they're full of cheaters sometimes, and they can rob your IP or whatever it is. And also, this is another 2012 title that runs very well, even at 1080p. That's insane. Lastly, I see an explosion here. Not a problem. Lovely performance. Fancying some Skyrim, guys? Well, we're playing it at the 1080p low settings with low textures as well, and it's getting 60 frames per second. Look at that. Not bad. It's really smooth, actually. Thought it was going to stutter quite a bit because with the GTX 260, it did. Now, obviously, Skyrim runs on a potato. <laughs> it's really, really easy to run. It ran on the PS3 as well, and the 8800 GTX is quite a bit faster than the PS3's GPU. If you're fancying higher quality graphics as well, it should be possible with 30 plus FPS all of the time. But here on low, we're seeing GPU utilizations going up to 90 plus percent so that means that in extremely intensive scenarios like when you're killing dragons with a lot of fire effects for example it should drop into the 50s and maybe even 40s at these settings so i would just keep it like this on low enjoy the game at these settings and uh, have fun because this is a great title, a lot of people play it but what is impressing me the most is that frame time stability in this one look at that frame time graph it is really smooth. I don't remember Skyrim to be this smooth with higher-end GPUs even. Looking at the waterfall, it gets pretty intensive sometimes. 93 GPU usage. Ooh, it's starting to drop a little bit. 57, I saw that. Ooh, okay, so that's pretty intensive. Those effects on, on the water, yeah. But not a problem, it's still really really playable. Next up is Team Fortress 2, still very popular and it's from 2007 and we're playing at 1080p using the high settings. 
and at 1080p resolution this is a high refresh rate experience look at that 200 almost 300 frames <laughs> jesus christ come on come on come on come on come on come on you where is it where is the bastard are you are you the spy no he's not the spy whoa 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 whoa, whoa. oh there he is there he is okay we got him we got him all good let's regenerate some of the shield hello there uh, <laughs> oh no well at least now we can see some more effects here nice lots of fire dropping into the 90s and 80s and 70s even look at that damn that's intensive still if you had something like this you were in heaven back in 2007 basically you know what back in the days going invisible would actually kill my fps when i played this game it's not the case with the 8800 gtx fortunately look at this and i had a bug as well where when i became invisible I, it was black instead of transparent and I could see the enemy spies. <laughs> I think it was on a Radeon 9600M laptop, something like that. It was really old and probably couldn't really handle this game very well. Anyways, this is the perfect type of multiplayer title to enjoy on something like this GPU. And now we have 2013's Tomb Raider at 720p using the high settings preset. On the advanced settings, you can take a better look at all of them. Hair quality is set to normal. By default, you can't really change that. Here we go, start counting our FPS, it's in the 40s. Now, given that this is a single player title, it's not first person or anything, you don't really need super fast reactions. So 30 plus FPS all of the time should be a decent experience in this one. So you can rest assured it's gonna be a great experience with the 8800 GTX on a 2013 game. Another AAA 2013 title. This was seven years old at this point at high settings and close to the target resolution of it, I guess. It would be like 1024 by 768 so yeah, 52 FPS average, minimum of 38 and maximum of 68. Could be 69 there, it would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, we have the stuttery mess that is Minecraft Java Edition. We're playing at 1080p resolution using like high settings with 10 chunks of render distance. And if you start flying around, yeah, it is pretty unplayable, right? It stutters like absolute crazy it's so ridiculous how badly optimized this game is and this is with iris and sodium installed as well which supposedly makes it run a little bit better but it's fixable all you need to do is install rivetuner statistics server and lock the fps to 60 over here and then it is gonna be a buttery smooth experience i'm sorry about the screen tearing now but yeah look at this well it's not buttery smooth but it's way better what are you doing here jack <laughs> i cannot believe what are you oh this is crazy actually do we need to save him because you know a lot of people save cats from the top of the trees there we go we saved the boy and he's hunting for us now oh such a cute boy, Jack. <laughs> now, let's try it in a more intensive map, okay? <laughs> this is Texas City of Future, and it uh, it drops from 60 FPS, so it's that there's like crazy. In this one, you actually need to lock it to like 40 frames per second, maybe like 35 for it to be a smooth experience. Sometimes you can still get uh, 60, but yeah, it is not the perfect experience. Now... What about shaders? <laughs> so this is BSL shaders on low and uh, yeah, it's getting three frames per second. <laughs> it's good that it can still load them. You know, I actually have a video, a recent one made like a month ago or so with the 8800 GT testing shaders in this game. So check that out if you are curious about performance on these old GPUs with a ton of shaders. But yeah, basically it's it's not going to be playable. All right, guys, it's conclusion time. And I got to say, I am a bit impressed with the performance of this little thing. It's so great to take a look at these old GPUs. I really love making these videos. But yeah, most 
most of the games that we tested were from 2012, 2013, and this GPU was already kind of outdated at that point. So the fact that it could still run those titles pretty well is fantastic. <laughs> this is a true legend of a card, but nobody should buy it in 2023, obviously, unless you are a collector or you want to build a retro PC. And with all of that said, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you in the next one very soon as always love you all bye bye